Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here. We do have a massive update today with House Speaker Mike Johnson. These could now be his last days as Speaker of the House. So we have some updates uh, from what Marjorie Taylor Greene is doing to House Speaker Mike Johnson as well as some other uh, conservatives as well as what Mike Johnson is doing in response, you know, has he let down the American people and who might end up stepping up in uh, in place of House Speaker Mike Johnson. So we have a lot to cover there and actually we're looking at what Donald John Trump had to say too. So we have a lot to cover and I have some new stuff from Mike Johnson that I want to share with you guys that I think is extremely interesting. Guys, we are just a few short months away from the November 2024 election. What do you guys think is going on? What do you guys think is going to happen come November 2024? Do you think Donald John Trump will be the victor? Or is it going to be Joe Biden? Or is Michelle Obama going to step up and take Joe Biden's place like a lot of people are saying? Um, I personally think and hope that Donald John Trump and Melania Trump get back in the White House and um, that's just what I think is <laughs> kind of going to be the best outcome for America. I do not think our country needs another four years of Joe Biden so he can get that so I can get the job done. He goes, oh, why do you want to do it? So I, I four more years so I can get the job done. It's like, dude, what you have you had four years. <laughs> Why do you need another four years to get the job done? And what job are you talking about? Sending more of precious, hard-paying U.S. tax dollars over to Ukraine? I mean, what? And letting in millions of illegals into our country is you? You want to do that more? You want to finish the job there? Anyways, I'm getting. I'm rambling. We're gonna start the uh, video off with a Bible reading. This is Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, Lest you strike your foot against a stone, you will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him, because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Comment amen down below. Here on this show, we always start the videos off with a Bible reading because God comes first. Amen. Through thick and thin, God is there. God is watching over you right now. You are a special, amazing God child. You are a child of God. Remember that, my friends. Okay, let's get started with the video update, shall we? Okay, so here we go. We are now tuning in. Representative Margie Taylor Greene lays out the case for Mike Johnson getting ousted. We got a lot of drama right now, and it's unfolding. Let's tune in. I am going to be calling this motion to vacate. Absolutely calling it. We have a speaker, Mike Johnson, that we all, by the way, I elected him. I voted for that man, so I have every right to be standing here. It wasn't a choice of America. It was a choice within our Republican conference. And I voted for Mike Johnson because his voting record before he became speaker was conservative. He voted against funding Ukraine. He was solidly pro-life. He voted to secure the border. Yeah, those three things, by the way, that bill that Mike Johnson got passed did send over $90 billion to um, overseas. And I think it was like $60 billion to Ukraine. 
it did not help secure the border and it did provide funding for abortions for i believe it was late-term abortions he voted to fight against democrats fight against the witch hunt against president trump but once he became speaker he has become a man that none of us recognize we have mike johnson because nobody hated mike johnson okay um there was nothing in his prior life or political or private that qualified him for this job he is a uh, lost ball in tall weeds. Oh. Unequipped to negotiate with Chuck Schumer. And a lot of people have ideas about why he's betrayed us. I can't wait to see Democrats go out and support a Republican speaker and have to go home to their primaries and have to run for Congress again, having supported a Republican speaker, a Christian conservative. I think that'll play well. I'm excited about it. And I also can't wait to see my Republican conference Show their cards and show who we are. Because voters deserve it. Obviously, she was being a little, um, I believe she was talking with satire there or being sarcastic, saying that she likes Democrats supporting a Christian. I don't know if you guys know this, but Mike Johnson was slammed as a megalomaniac for when he compared himself to Moses. Have you guys seen this clip? This, is, uh, this went viral after Mike Johnson said that God spoke to him in the middle of the night for weeks and called him to be a new Moses. Well, Mike Johnson, I don't know. I don't know. Let's listen. Ready? Be ready for what? Okay, I don't know. Tell me very clearly to prepare and be ready. Be ready for what? Okay, I don't know. We're coming to a Red Sea moment. What does that mean, Lord? Um, and then when the speaker's race happened and, and, and Kevin McCarthy, who's a dear friend of mine, was deposed, uh, vacated from the chair, oh, wow, well, this is what uh, the Lord may have been preparing us for. And so um, I, I was started praying more about that, and then the Lord began to wake me up uh, through this three-week process we're in in the middle of the night and, and to speak to me and to write things down, plans and, and procedures and ideas on how we could pull the conference together. Now, at the time, I assumed the Lord is going to choose a new Moses, and, oh, thank you, the Lord, Lord, you're going to allow me to be Aaron to Moses. And so I, I, I worked to get Steve Scalise uh, elected speaker that didn't happen and then jim jordan who's like another big brother of mine no that didn't happen and then tom emmer and you know ultimately 13 people ran for the for the post um and and the lord kept telling me to wait 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 so i waited i waited and then at the end when it came to the end the lord said now step forward me I, I'm, I'm supposed to be aaron no the lord said step forward whoa so what do you guys have to say about that? Mike Johnson saying that God called him to be a new Moses. And now, all of a sudden, you have a lot of Christians who are coming out against Mike Johnson himself. Speaker of the House Mike Johnson received a fresh wave of backlash for his alleged ties to Christian nationalism after a video was shared online of the Republican leader comparing himself to biblical figure Moses, Jen Psaki, who was the White House advisor, came out and slammed Mike Johnson for his Christian, Christian beliefs. Bill Maher did the same thing. Um, the, look at this. The, the, it was uh, one of Trump's, um, I forget who it is, but it's a, a, a Trump, uh, Mary Trump. She is the estranged niece of former President Donald Trump. She said this, if Mike Johnson doesn't believe this, he's a manipulative maniac. If he does, he's psychotic. Either way, he's a massive megalomaniac. If he wants to pretend he's Moses, he can start by removing himself to the desert for 40 years. That's pretty intense. Uh, Riggleman wrote last night, the Lord told me Mike Johnson those things as a joke and that Mike Johnson was actually George Santos. So let's uh, tune in. This is, uh, again, House Speaker Mike Johnson facing a potential ousting by Marcia Taylor Greene. What do you guys think about her doing this to Mike Johnson? Do you think this is the right move right now? Out of the drama on Capitol Hill, House Speaker Mike Johnson faces a possible attempt to oust him by right-wing firebrand Marjorie Taylor Greene, but Democrats are prepared to save his job. Senior congressional correspondent Rachel Scott has the latest. Good morning, Rachel. Oh, wow. Democrats said that they will block the attempt to oust him so democrats might for whatever reason they want to keep mike johnson well <laughs> they probably want to keep him because he's he's agreeing with a lot of democrats right now democrats are happy that they're like oh mike johnson just signs off on whatever we give him 
Hey, George, good morning to you. Yeah, this is a striking move. Democratic leadership announcing that they would save the Republican Speaker of the House if it comes down to it. House and keep in mind, guys, I know I keep cutting off this clip, but I have a lot to say, okay? A lot of you guys comment, Dylan, don't stop, stop cutting them off so much. I'm like, this is my YouTube channel. I'm going to talk. <laughs> Democrats have a majority in the Senate. They also have leadership in the White House. The only place where Republicans have leadership is in the House of Representatives. That's Mike Johnson. But he is agreeing with Democrats. So essentially, Democrats are getting their way in every single branch of the government, in the White House, in the Senate, and in the House of Representatives. That's why people like Marjorie Taylor Greene do, do not want Mike Johnson in there. Let's keep watching. Speaker Mike Johnson has and all the way and, and by the way another reason I have to cut these people off is for commentary purposes if I just play the entire clip I'll get dinged with the copyright and my videos will get deleted just FYI been under threat from only a handful of far-right members of his own party for weeks now they're <laughs> calling her far right she is outraged that Johnson reached across the aisle to work with Democrats to keep the government funded to pass that much needed aid to Ukraine calling it all a betrayal any single lawmaker can try to force a vote to oust the Speaker of the House, but to be clear, the vast majority of Republicans do not agree with this push. They call it a distraction and a sideshow. Even former President Donald Trump acknowledging some support for House Speaker Mike Johnson, saying that he's a good person, acknowledging that he has a razor-thin majority. The bottom line here is that Green can move forward at any point. She is expected to speak here on Capitol Hill in just a few hours, but that support from Democrats all but ensures that Johnson's job is safer now, Gia. All right, Rachel, thank you for your report there on the hill so uh they're saying again this is abc news so they're obviously a liberal leaning show they're saying mike johnson's safe obviously they like mike johnson because he's agreeing with a lot of the democrats right now but again uh margie taylor green she's not stepping down she says she will force the vote over speaker johnson next week okay so probably starting on monday let's tune in up on Capitol Hill. This is huge news, guys. You gotta thumbs up this video to get more people to hear the truth about what's going on. Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene said she will force a vote to oust the House Speaker Mike Johnson as soon as next week. Let's go. And people are saying that she could be the next uh, uh, running mate for Trump. She, uh, Donald Trump could end up picking this woman because she's not afraid to speak up like Trump. Live to CNN's Manu Raju is up on Capitol Hill for us. Uh, Manu, you were there at the press conference. I didn't see a whole lot of members of Congress uh, standing around Marjorie Taylor Greene. Does she think she could pull this off? Uh, there's virtually no chance she can pull this off because of the decision by the Democratic leaders. Hakeem Jeffries announcing yesterday that they would support the effort to kill that resolution. This is much different than what happened in the fall. Of course, at that time, this was led by Republicans to oust Kevin McCarthy. Eight Republicans voted to kick him out of the speakership. But then all Democrats did as well. But Democrats view this situation differently. And the aftermath of Mike Johnson cutting some deals to keep the government open and then providing aid for Ukraine, $61 billion in aid to Ukraine, all of which say that there's no reason for them to kick out Johnson this time. But it's Let me guys show you just the details of this, just so you guys realize how bad it is. And Chuck Schumer was just smiling ear to ear with, you know, how much that he loved this bill. Um, Chuck Schumer, you know, he obviously does, does not like Mike Johnson. But at the same time, he's he's really happy because of what he did. <laughs> um, uh, Chuck Schumer, you know, he's uh, he's ecstatic over this because well, there's so much. Look at this. This is what happened. Over ninety billion dollars in foreign aid was passed. Sixty-two billion dollars to military support in Ukraine, and another ten billion dollars in humanitarian aid for Ukraine. So over seventy billion dollars went to Ukraine in this bill, another 14 to Israel, and another 5 billion for partner partners in Indo-Pacific. I mean, just look how ecstatic Chuck Schumer is over this. Democrats love Mike Johnson, my friends. They love him because he's helping them push these liberal deals through, which quite frankly, support other nations, fund foreign wars, and do not really help with securing the border. I mean, just look how happy 
this bill and what Mike Johnson did made Chuck Schumer. I love Mondays. You've said that you worked very closely with Leader McConnell on this, this bill, now that we see what's in it. Oh yeah, Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer. <laughs> Saving the day. Yeah, these freaking people leading our government. You got Chuck Schumer. How old is Chuck Schumer? This dude, he's 73. He's been working, keep in mind, for the, for the, for the Democrat Party since 1975, okay? This dude's been <laughs> working for, in politics for 50 years, 49 years. And he's the leader. He's one of the top three leaders in our country, guys, Chuck Schumer. And Mitch McConnell, by the way, oh yeah, he's really been, uh, you know, the dude can barely talk, all right? He's having freezing moments up there. People are calling for him to reside. And, and when did he start working for, in politics? He started serving in, uh, in politics um, since 1985, is that right? Is that correct? Or earlier? I thought it was even earlier than that. I thought Mitch McConnell was like the 60s or something. He's an American politician. He has served in the United Senior United States Center from Kentucky since 1985. Um, I'm trying to see when he started. He shortly after the, uh, he, this was, okay, yeah, he, his last day was 1967. Um, he served as Deputy U United States Attorney General under President Gerald Ford, 1974 to 75. I mean, yeah, the dude's been, where he was elected into the U.S. Senate in 1984. So, I mean, that's 40 years, okay? Mitch McConnell, Chuck Schumer, uh, Chuck Schumer, and then you got Nancy Pelosi, how old is her, how old is she? She's 84. She started working in politics since night since what? 19 since the 60s. Look at this. <laughs> the 60s. And not only that, but Joe Biden. How old is Joe Biden? 81, 82? He's 81, about to be 82. And this dude has been working in politics since 1970, 55 years, 54 years. So these past four people, these are the people leading our nation. They've all, they're all in their 70s and 80s and they've all been working in politics since the 60s and 70s. You wonder why nothing ever gets done, all right? Finally, we have Mike Johnson, who's a young man. Mike Johnson, age 52. And when did he start working in politics? Probably pretty recently. He started working in politics in uh, 2003, in the 2000s, 2004. And then you got Donald Trump, who, when did he start getting into politics? In 2016, when he ran for president for the first time? So you, you see all the Democrats, and Mitch, with Mitch McConnell, who's basically a rhino, in my opinion, he's basically a Democrat at this point too. Those are the people who, anyways, I, I just, it's just so much. But yeah, that this is why exactly why um, you know people don't really don't like Mike Johnson right now is because this is what they passed and it really did not help secure the border whatsoever. Well, let's tune in to uh, Marjorie Taylor Green here. So same deals that have caused this anger among those far right Republicans like Marjorie Taylor Green, who says that she does plan to call for this vote next week simply to put members on the record. Now, one question is, was why is she moving forward with this? Because even if, despite Donald Trump suggesting he is not in favor of this at this time, I put that question to her at this press conference just moments ago. Whoa. So Donald Trump wants Mike Johnson to stay. This is huge because um, usually, guys, Marjorie Taylor Greene, she just basically does whatever Donald Trump wants her to do. Or, like, she's kind of been accused, and I've seen it many times, of basically being a puppet of Donald Trump. Like, when the first House Speaker was going on with Kevin McCarthy, um, sorry, I'm eating chocolate. <laughs> it's late, guys. It's like 10 p.m. I'm eating a little chocolate dessert, sorry. Donald Trump said, oh, let's elect Kevin McCarthy. Let's get him through, let's get him through. And a lot of, you know, Republicans didn't want him. Marjorie Taylor Greene said, well, Trump wants Kevin McCarthy, so we gotta vote Kevin McCarthy. And then later on, I don't know, anyways, I just feel like she always loves Trump. 
Um, there was even a photo of her. I wonder if I can find it. Donald Trump and Margie Taylor Green phone call house vote. There was like a famous uh, photo of Marjorie Taylor Greene like on the phone. This one. This was while they were electing. When she was trying to hand the phone off, you can see it says DT on there. She was like, Donald Trump's on the line. Donald Trump's on the line. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she's like such a, like Donald Trump is, I'm sorry guys, but he's not in Congress. Like, yeah, I mean, he's like a good guy to listen to, but like, they're trying to vote for House Speaker, and Mark Taylor Green's like, I got Trump on the line, I got Trump on the line. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's like, that's, I honestly, she kind of made herself a meme because of that, just saying. If this goes, fails next week, as is expected, will you continue to try to force a vote on this issue? And two, former President Trump has said positive things about the Speaker, and has said he doesn't favor a motion to vacate. Aren't you defying the former president's wishes? By the way, this is actually decent reporting from CNN. This guy, I don't like CNN at all, but whoever this man is, he's actually doing decent reporting and asking her a, a decent question. Again, I'm, I try to be as, bi as uh, unbiased as possible. I'm saying I think CNN's actually doing a decent, uh, just this guy alone, he's doing a decent job and he actually, you know, came out here and he's doing a story and he actually had, he actually backed himself up with saying, look, I asked her the question, let's show her response. So kudos, the one, this is the first time ever I actually like this guy, Manu, or not this guy, but somebody on CNN, Manu Rahu. I actually think this guy's de a decent guy. Anyways, just saying, I always, I'm just shocked at that, that I actually liked uh, this guy on CNN. Office was just moments ago. If this goes fails next week, as is expected, will you continue to try to force a vote on this issue? And two, former President Trump has said positive- As he's holding a Starbucks. That would be me as a reporter. Things about the speaker and has said he doesn't favor a motion to vacate. Aren't you defying the former president's wishes? Absolutely not. I'm the biggest supporter of President Trump and that's why I probably wear this MAGA hat. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Marjorie Taylor Greene, like, you're, you're memeing yourself, like, come on, like, at least just give a proper response to this guy. I mean, I kind of feel bad for the guy. Like, he's trying to get a legit answer out of Marjorie Taylor Greene. She goes, no, I'm a MAGA. It's like, okay, come on, we get, let's get serious here. Come on, this is like, if you're going to vote to oust House Speaker, at least answer the question. I fight for his agenda every single day, and that's why I'm fighting here against my own Republican Congress. I'm surprised he didn't start laughing at that. ...to fight harder against the Democrats. Mike Johnson has fully funded the Department of Justice that wants to put President Trump in jail, giving him a death sentence. Mike Johnson funded something that was going to put Trump in jail? Let's listen to what he had to say. And Mike Johnson just put out a statement saying, quote, this motion is wrong for the Republican Congress conference, wrong for the institution, and wrong for the country. We do expect when this vote happens that Republican leaders are going to move pretty quickly to actually take this up, essentially kill it, and try to move on past this episode. And there really are no other major decisions that are coming down the pipe that could put him in more hot water with his right flank. There is an effort that they would have to keep the government open, but that's not until the fall. So perhaps Mike Johnson that could survive this threat because of the Democratic support and Republicans. Many Republicans don't want to go through that messy episode that happened last fall when McCarthy was ousted and there were about three weeks of no speaker. The Republicans are battling each other. They're hoping to move past this and focus on the election. This guy, I have to I have to give this guy props. I'm sorry, I've never seen this guy before. He's he is a good reporter. I mean, based off of this clip. I, I he's doing I mean he's just reporting the facts. I I I you know, I, I, I kind of like him. Okay, anyways, let's listen to what Matt Gates had to react about this, about Matt Gaetz, um about Mike Johnson getting ousted. I disagree with that. Why? Oh, yeah, David Wright. That's not Mike John. that's not Matt Gates. <laughs> Hold on, he's coming. It's not the time. I wish he wouldn't do that. Uh, I, that's sad to hear. You know, we got more important things to, uh, to work on instead of that. Well, bless your heart. I uh, think this is... Um, uh, all about wanting more attention and not producing actual results for the people we represent. It is a question that deserves an answer, and it deserves an answer with a recording. Wow, this guy's reporting everywhere. 
I actually like him. He's actually going up and interviewing and asking like the people. He's th this is not fake news, guys. We have to even though this is a CNN reporter, this is not fake news. He's actually going out and interviewing people and showcasing that on his show. So kudos to this guy. Good night in the press. <laughs> like he's actually doing reporting. <laughs> CNN actually doing reporting. Who would have thought? Well, I think everybody's got the weekend to reflect. Uh, nothing's done until it's done. I, I would certainly uh, want to discourage them from doing that because I think in an election year right now, it, it probably doesn't portend it too well. And uh, I don't know where it would lead. I shared with you before. I think I've got one to three Republican colleagues. Matt Gates is supporting Mike Johnson, guys. So Martin, there's not a lot of people I actually haven't heard anybody supporting Marjorie Taylor Greene on this one. We would accept a bribe to either depart the Congress early or protect, perhaps even vote for a Democrat. So, you know, if we had a majority that was four, like when I executed a motion to vacate or higher, there becomes a prisoner's dilemma where there's less of a likelihood of a bribe impacting the outcome. But I also know that Thomas and Marjorie comment this with sincerity. I think they're very frustrated with the direction of the House. I share that frustration. Their substantive critiques of Mike Johnson are largely true and accurate. No one is taking much exception to those substantive critiques. But uh, in terms of the timing, I think we've got to be sensitive to the calendar and the realities. There's a reason I did this in a non-election year. Can he sustain his leadership with the support of Democrats? We'll see. Thanks. We'll see. Boom, shakalaka. And now... Let's listen to uh, what Mike Johnson had to say. He's reacting to this all. Now, here is the truth. Let's tune in to Mike Johnson talk about him potentially getting ousted. This is huge, guys. So thumbs up the video, and now let's watch this clip. And I'll take a few questions. Mr. Uh, first, I've heard of it. Um, look, I have to. I have to do my job. We have to do what we believe to be the right thing. Um, what the country uh, needs right now is is a functioning Congress. They need a Congress that works well, works together, and does not um, hamper its own ability to solve these problems. And so, we saw what happened with the motion to vacate the last time. Congress was closed for three weeks. No one can afford for that to happen. And uh, you know, so we need we need people who are. Um, who are serious about the job here to continue to do that job and get it done. So, um, you know, I have to, I have to do what I believe is right every day and let the chips fall where they may. Y'all heard me say that many times and we'll see. Do you have any conversations with Peter Jeffries either directly or to an emissary before the National Security Supplemental came to the floor about a possibility like this where you would receive democratic support if the motion to vacate came up? No, no. I, I, I have, was laser focused on getting the supplemental done. Uh, I, no, I've had colleagues. So guys, I mean, Mike Johnson, he's saying that, look, there's bigger things going on right now. And even Matt Gates, again, he said, look, we need to focus on the election. That's what a lot of people are saying. We need to focus on the election right now. And I mean, I don't know about you, but even Mike Johnson went on the Ben Shapiro show to talk about everything going on. I don't know if you guys watched this clip of him on the Ben Shapiro show, but Mike Johnson, I mean... He's really, really wanting to, you know, focus on this this year, this election. This there's an election year coming up, and uh, you know, Donald Trump. He's really gearing towards a victory. I don't know if you guys have seen this March for Life 2024 rally, but Mike Johnson talks about being a product of unplanned pregnancy at the March for Life for 2024. So Mike Johnson, he is pro life. Watch this. And that they're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, including the right to life and liberty, pursuit of happiness. Those are inalienable rights. They cannot be taken away. And, and so it's from the very beginning that our founders boldly proclaimed those self-evident truths, that our rights do not come from government. Our rights come from God. Our Amen. Our rights do not come, come from government. They come from God. I like Mike Johnson. And I hope I just... I really, I'm really sad that, you know, that bill didn't go as planned, but hey, maybe, maybe there's a plan for this all. I don't know. I'm just tuning in and trying to understand all like you guys are, 
Please let me know your thoughts on what you think is really going on. Thanks for watching. Take care. God bless. We'll talk to you soon. Bye now.